Hello ladies and gentlemen, voiceover here, welcome back to the channel. About over two years ago now, I bought this amp off of eBay for parts for not working for about 350 bucks, and I thought, for some reason, at the time, all amps had fuses, and this would just be a simple fuse replacement. Boy was I wrong, but I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, so first things first, let's take the back panel off. Uh, these are the wire connections for power on, ground, etc. And under this main panel are the amp guts. So around the power supply section, you could see when the camera goes back into focus that there's charring around the MOSFETs. And that is not good. More burnt power supply FETs. Output section looks all right, and this is the majority of the damage right near these two FETs and inductor. No clue what caused that at the time of recording this. And then there's also the switch that I broke off trying to bend it back. Next order of business is to take off all the heat sinks so I could get a better idea of the condition of the FETs. You can see the output section looks relatively fine. Burnt power supply section MOSFETs. Rectifiers look alright. And more melted power supply FETs. Next I will take the board out of the case. This is the board outside of the case. You can see the case with burn marks where the FETs and inductor blue. You could see that area on the middle of the board. And the contacts of the output section and rectifier FETs are alright. And quite a few of the contacts for the power supply FETs are charred. Same thing with this side. And once again, the output side looks fine. Right here, you can see where the majority of the damage is. And yes, that will be PCB damage that will need to be repaired. As well as all the traces that were damaged. And it is looking pretty rough. Dumbass beetle. We have now gotten to the point in the video where I've lost the footage. Very nice. So I'm going to get you guys up to speed on what I did. Try and make this brief. What I did was use these like little like handheld hedge trimmers to cut off all of the uh, little MOSFET legs. Same thing on this side. And I desoldered each pin individually. And I use isopropyl alcohol. I have 91%. And I just cleaned up all the charring. And I also cleaned up this little check mark that was right here on the Soundstream logo. I don't know why there was a check mark on it. It was in like Sharpie. <clears throat> I think maybe that might have been from a prior repair. I don't know. Besides that, I had, you know, done the same thing with the ice purple alcohol around here. And I had removed the coil. Well, no. Well, yeah, coil, inductor. I think it's an inductor. Uh, I've removed it right here. I had to use a box cutter to get whatever kind of adhesive this is. If anybody has a better way about removing this, please let me know. But I ended up using the soldering iron to melt it a little bit and the box cutter to kind of like pry it off. So in addition to that, I had gotten the two FETs that were right here that were burned. I got those off, which were basically just friction held in there or something like that because everything had burned away so i didn't really have to desolder anything i believe there yeah so there was a resistor right here that i desoldered and a transistor over here that i re re desoldered 
and right here another resistor that i desoldered this resistor uh, a bunch of stuff i removed around here that i'm hoping i still have the parts for uh yeah to remove the fan i just got rid of these screws uh there was a metal bracket on the bottom that was attached to the fan that held it up above the board then it connected right here so i just did all that took it off i don't know where it is right now but most of the fan was melted which is not good and going forward i have to probably remove this transformer because you could see if it's going to focus this phone does not like focusing uh right here uh the burnt trace goes under the transformer so i'll need to repair that i'll probably have to cut out this section repair each trace individually and remove these resistors and uh yeah i guess try and put new ones there so far i think i will be shelving this for a little while because this is seeming to be more like a pain in the ass than i expected and i have actually managed to find a second amp and then i bought said amp this one came with its like little plexiglass panel but it also has its own problems very cool um this one powers on the green light turns on and everything like that there's no power to the output for the speakers um so there's a short somewhere on this and i found right here the camera doesn't do so well in low light but Right here, those are two diodes that are missing, which is weird because I saw those were missing on the other amp as well, so I think it might be a factory thing. Don't know. But in addition to that, right here, you see on this side right here, there are two diodes. On this side, there are two diodes that are missing, and these were here on the other amp, so I might take those diodes from the pcb damaged amp and put them on this and make a video about this at another date this was one why don't you want to run two amps run two amps and it's really cool because these are really rare and second i have a new like reference for the pcb repair on the first amp so the first amp that i showed you which is the main video about which the main video is about is amp number one this is amp number two and I may or may not make a video about this at a later date. Plus, I got an actual soldering station with an oscilloscope and a power supply. So, yeah. Um, I probably will try doing more amp repair videos. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.